that we're looking at is playing exclusively at the Music Box on midnights, right. on Fridays, I guess. And along with that, we were lucky enough to get the director, John McNaughton, and also we have the distributor of the film, Chuck Perello, tonight. Right. So, so we'll talk a little bit about the, the Music Box and about uh, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. This is the director of Henry, John McNaughton, and we also have the distributor from MPI, and that's, Radio, yes. and that's here in Chicago? Illinois, yeah. Okay, yeah. Chuck Perello. Okay. I was involved with a man named Waleed Ali, who owns the company Chuck works for, which is MPI Home Video. The, the two brothers that own it, Waleed and Malik, who I've known for at least 10 years, I used to work for them uh, when they were operating out of their parents' basement in Oak Forest, Illinois, which has been, they've come a long, long way since then. And uh, Waleed and I had talked about making a horror film for some years, and, and I was working on some other projects for them, some documentary projects. And uh, Waleed finally agreed to make a horror film. So. Uh, we got together and uh, we're accessing the, the Chicago filmmaking community and also the Chicago theater community, which I can not say enough good about. We, we had access to, uh, to an incredibly high level of talent, that, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it worked out really well. And uh, I can't say enough about the people we used in the city of Chicago and the guy that starred in Henry, Michael Rooker, has gone on to be in Mississippi Burning Eight Men Out. He just worked with Custer Gravis and uh, Jessica Lang in Music Box and uh, he, Michael's off to a big career. So now, you, now, would you say that we could call Henry basically a slasher film, or what genre would you put it in? It's a, I call it a character study. Okay. Uh, it was reviewed in the Reader by uh, Jonathan Rosenbaum, and he put it, he categorized it as a slasher film, and went on to to give a history of slasher films. And he, according to him, it starts with Psycho. Isn't that the way, though, the movie's being publicized? I had mentioned to Chuck earlier that The Loop is doing, uh, I mean, has been, been been talking about it, AM, The Loop 1000. Yeah, Buzz and Kilman. Buzz is. Kilman and the other drive-in reviewer, uh, Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I do think we do have a clip ready. Right. And I, I mean, you want to set this clip up? Uh, we're showing, oh, it's, it's, this it's is the uh, Wacker Drive clip. Yeah, these guys, well, you, you, Slasher is, is sort of, these, this is a very real film, and... Uh, about real people, based on real people, whose names I won't mention, and uh, this is, th they kill randomly. They kill for, for reasons that I, I don't think anyone... Now you said based on truth? I mean, there are real... There's, there's a, there are, yes, there are, there are real people who this is based upon, and I'm not going to mention their names this evening for various reasons, <laughs> okay. but uh, yeah, it's based on a true story, but ever so loosely. Uh, so in the clip we're going to see, which is filmed entirely here in Chicago, Yeah. Um, well, the, the real killers were never in Chicago. Okay. Maybe they were, but they didn't kill in Chicago. They're, they were in, like, the southwest and south. So we, and, uh, we based it in Chicago simply because we didn't have enough money to get out of Chicago. Here, yeah. <laughs> they, probably, they probably ne never been to Oak Park either, so no one out there needs <laughs> yeah, to worry. Right? Right. Okay. So, so this is a random murder by Henry and Otis, partners in crime. Here, I want to show you something. Where'd you get this? Be careful, Otis. It's loaded. Where'd you get it? Guns are easy to get. I can make a phone call and get a gun. Anybody can get a gun, Otis. What do you got in mind, Henry? What do you think? I don't know. Put up that. What? Just put up the hood on this.
You guys need any help? Otis, do you need some help or can you do it yourself? How do people react to a scene like that? I've been in rooms with people who don't know what they're about to see and stuff, and it, it, it's, the, the picture makes them very uncomfortable. But I, I would say, from a, a wide, wide range of people, really, you know, the film was the intent of the film was not low or sleazy, mm -hmm. and I think it, it works with you know yeah. a lot of people um, yeah. who I would expect to really be shocked yeah. and horrified by it. So you know, I really like the picture, even though it gave me nightmares. Well, and you can tell in, in well. the sequence, you know, you said you're not sleazy or so. It's very classy. You know, the the camera work going into lower whacker. I don't know how you filmed that or whatever. Well, it was Charlie Lieberman. I, 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 I don't want to take credit that Charlie Lieberman, yeah. who's our director of photography, we got in. It, we just got really good people in Chicago well, uh, on a very low-budget film that, that couldn't be done in Los Angeles. A more important question would be, uh, how did the MPAA, which is the film's rating board, react to yeah. this? <laughs> right. Now, yeah, what so you, okay, what is the film rating of Henry, Portrait X. of a Serial Killer? Well, uh, excuse me, unrated. Yeah, the film originally got an, uh, an X rating for being disturbing. The MPAA would not give us any indication of what needed to be cut to get an R rating, and an X rating severely cripples uh, distribution plans for any film. We well, uh, had mentioned earlier about the people being independents, you being an independent and having trouble getting space on the overcrowded video shelves now or the, you know, people want, 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 want their movies right, put right, on, uh, you know. uh, The uh, major studios can get away with basically what they want to get away with. You have uh, things like uh, Indiana Jones, where uh, uh, a heart is ripped out or, or heads are rolling around, and uh, basically they rule the uh, the movie rating systems. Uh, they don't want competition in the uh, theatrical arena or in the home video arena. Hmm. They don't want uh, their movies competing with an independent film where the box art might be a little bit more suggestive or just a little bit more eye-catching. Now, John, want how do you feel as a director having that kind oh, of put down on you? Well, I have to be careful with the MP. I just went. I just made another picture in Los Angeles. Yeah, we want to talk about substantially that. Substantially larger budget than Henry, and uh, I went through it again with the MPAA. The, the, the thing one we have to realize in the old days, bef the, the reason that the Hayes Committee was uh, the Hayes Office, which was the first in MPAA, the 50s, sure. actually in the 20s or oh, 30s, whenever 30s, it was, yeah. was because it, censorship was taking place on a state by state basis which made it a total nightmare for anyone in the business. So the Hayes office came, and, and if you were clear with the Hayes office, then you could release the picture, rather than have to tailoring it for all 48 states at the time, 50 states now. We're in this pretty much the same situation. The MPAA is not a censorship board. They're a ratings board, mm -hmm. which is, makes it really tough, because they say, oh, well, we can't tell you what to cut, because then we'd be censors. So we can tell you that this scene is a little rough. We can only say that we don't think people of the, you know, 17 should see this picture. So it's, it's, it's tough, but it, the the... the Without the MPAA, we would have state-by-state -state censorship, and it would be worse. Now, are they so trying to say that the scene like we just watched was too violent or too gruesome? They or, found I mean that in Henry it was the, t the tone, uh, the overall intent that they, they said, basically, this film is so dark overall that we can't tell you any specific areas to cut because you'd wind up cutting 80% of your picture, and you'd, you know, you'd wind up with a 30-second commercial. Well, that's real nice. the director of Henry, John McNaughton. Okay. There's a difference between an adult picture and a pornographic picture. And the problem with the X rating is it automatically puts you in yeah. with pornography. And, yeah. it, and, it, and, and they're, they, you know, we're t everyone's talking about an A rating, yeah. Siskel and Eber, everybody, which means, okay, you've got to be 18, you've got to be an adult. But this isn't a pornographic picture. No. This is an adult it's picture. It's not rated. The rating certificate was returned to the MPAA's review board, so it is an adult or a not rated film so nobody under 17 can get in is that right or I don't know 18? what what happens once you uh, take an unrated if if you can if there's mm -hmm. restrictions you're saying it's put upon the music box now it's having its world premiere it had actually it had you its world premiere at the, at the Chicago Festival. 
film right. festival at the Music Box. And then because of the ratings, because of other problems behind the scenes, it sort of got shelved for a number of years until Chuck came to MPAA, <laughs> MPAA, MPI, right. the company that owns the picture, and uh, sort of championed it and got it back out there. And it is going to come out without a rating. Right. Yeah. Right. It'll Not just rating. have the warning thing like this, you know, has graphic violence and... Uh, most likely no? not. We don't want to discourage. Are the know. are the papers are are is the Tribune going to show advertisements for it? We don't know yet. Or the Sun Times? <laughs> we I'm don't just know. Curious, yet. you know. know. The Tribune's really been great to us uh, right. in terms of pu publicity and stuff. I don't know, you know, but I don't know what their the specific policy. Many uh, newspapers in in American cities will not advertise a picture which has been X-rated or, <laughs> you know, it's like Nolo Contendere, yeah. no rating. So I don't know what what will happen. Uh, some papers won't take it. Some will. And we'll see. And that was Henry, and if anybody had seen, we should have made a warning on this. We should have said, but after all, everybody, it's only special effects. It's not real, like Charles and I have talked about on many different occasions. Well, I was going to ask John, you weren't out to outgross the viewer. No, I, actually, there's a little anecdote about that particular scene. We, there's a scene right before. The reason he's, he's, he gets stabbed, well, I'm not going to go I know, I to tell the whole story. That, yeah. But he gets the, he gets, the guy whose head just was removed gets stabbed in the eye. And to stab someone in the With eye, you have, to, comb. Right, you have to make an artificial head. <laughs> right. Okay. We had never planned to actually show that head once he was <laughs> got, got the stabbing, but it was such a low budget, you and did. we spent the money to make the yeah. head, and it looked pretty good, so we figured, what the hell? <laughs> we, we, we might as well get some miles out of this thing. But I'm saying so. some of our viewers, some of these movies try to outgross, you know, the, the customer to induce them to come. I'm, su I'm sure that wasn't your intention, but to what extent do you use horrific effects to tell the story well, to, to make a statement if you tell sure, if you're, yeah. well if you're telling the story you're okay to me if you're, if you're telling the story you know you can choose not to show okay they've killed this guy they got to get him out of the apartment right so they're going to cut him up dismember okay it. so yeah. you can choose not to show it or yeah. you can choose to show it again i just gave the reason behind the scenes reason why we chose to show it is because we paid to make have the head made but we hadn't you know, but if you can make the point, if you know, you know, you can make the point with sound effects, and you see that he's sawing, and, and you no. hear the sounds, you realize he's, and then you see them walk out later, and they've got the bags. Right. You know what's happened. Sure. Uh, to to yeah, actually exactly. use that clip to show it was per for shock. All the violence that comes up here comes from a story and comes from psychological motivations, which makes it more and more, much more deep. Do you, I, do I do you believe that we should, have a should serve the story? Yeah. Um, I do opinion. believe we have a caller on the line. Maybe they've seen Henry. Caller, you're on the line? I'm Carol from Burbank. Oh, hi, hi Car Carol, right? Yeah. Yeah, have you seen Henry? No, I haven't. I just saw the clip that you showed. I just wanted to ask John, the director, if, if this is a real portrait of like a serial killer, or is it just like fiction, or is it not fiction or fiction? It's both. <laughs> Uh, it, there, there are, there, there, there are the, of the three real, of the three lead characters in the picture. There are based on three real people, who, uh, two of whom were murderers, and, and the young woman was not. Uh, but we took the basis of their story. Myself and Richard Fire, who is uh, the artistic director of the Organic Theater, and my screenwriting partner, and uh, we, we based our story on, on, on them. But then we sort of took it where we felt like it should go. Are these it's people in jail? Are they yes, still alive? Yes, they're both on death row. Oh. And, so, uh, so you can't mention states. their names then? Well, uh, they're 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 okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know. uh, John, your plans, you, you said you have another movie, The Borrower. Yeah, why don't you tell us the, about uh, that, The Borrower? Borrowers. Yeah, The Borrower, which is a uh, another, well, it's, it's, it's 
more of a mainstream vein. horror film, a fan horror sci-fi fantasy. The thing that, that m was so disturbing about Henry to most viewers was we pulled out the fantasy element and made it a real story. So it, 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 it's more affecting. Which is it, a good point. Right. Yeah. It, oh, and Henry was very realistic. You know. Well, that was the idea, and I think that's one reason the MPAA. I've seen much more, you know, effects much more gross than Henry. Well, we had a couple of regular we were going to show, but I don't think we're going to have time right. to try But they're always based on some sort of horror fantasy. You know, the monster comes out of woods or whatever happens. The Borrower is, is uh, while not so traditional, it's, it's got the fantasy element, the horror fantasy, about a, uh, a creature from outer space who is a criminal. I think mm. there's some TV series out right now that's very <laughs> sure. similar. And, and, and anyway, he's committed horrible crimes on his planet, and the, their punishment, their ultimate punishment, is to turn one into a human being and send them down there, dump them, you know. It's like, if you want to act like a monkey, we'll put you in the <laughs> zoo. You want to act like a, like a human, you want to act like a murderous human being, we'll turn you into one and, and drop you there. So, it uh, stars Radon Chong, a company that uh, did uh, Stormy Monday, Patty Hearst, yeah. mm -hmm. Teen, uh, Wolf. Teen Wolf, and uh, collapsed, though, two or three weeks ago. <laughs> so the borrower may not be coming to theaters real soon, uh, but I, I, I'm assured that it, we're about nine days from completing the picture, and uh, Atlantic went into a deep financial crisis. And so you're the also picture's John, kind of in limbo. You also mentioned that you were having trouble getting a regular rating out of this one also Yeah, now? I think, you know, the, again, I, I want to make peace with the uh, MPAA because I hopefully will be sending more pictures through there as years go by. And basically, one of my problems with the MPAA is, is you know, the people on, on there, are, the people I have talked to and stuff, are you know, they're, they're smart people. They know what the score is, et cetera, et cetera. I wish that the filmmakers could have more personal contact. I wish I could go into the room with them and say, listen, I didn't try to make a sleazy picture right. here. I mean, you they know. They look listen, at it you know, afterwards right. and... Uh, there's a reasons that this is done this way, and there's a story to be told, and this is why we put this stuff here. And the borrower was the same thing. It, 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 some of the, you know, some of the stuff they let go was uh, amazed me because I thought for sure that they would call. And some of the stuff they objected to was like, give me a break, you know. I mean, like so I, it's, it's, it's I arbitrary. Thought it was tame compared to some of the well, outrageous yeah, but things I know what you've seen. <laughs> what he's, yeah, and what, what the director here is talking about. You were building up the right. suspense element. It was realistic. It didn't oh, have the. The Freddies, as you mentioned, or yeah. the Jasons. Well, you know, so it was more of a realistic Once you have fantasy, movie. then then you can pull away from. It. Yeah, well, the, uh, the it's okay. The threshold for for violence in the films is getting a lot less. I mean, yeah, if it's Friday the Thirteenth yeah. were rated this today, it would have gotten an X rating. Uh, I recently seen an interview with uh, Wes Craven, who did, mm -hmm. uh, who did the did first it. Nightmare on Elm Street, and, <coughs> and he says that Hollywood. the only film that he ever got through without an X rating. X, several cuts was uh, the Serpent in the Rainbow, which so. was more of a mainstream horror movie, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, Henry is at the Music Box Midnight's on Friday, right? So it's going pretty and good. And the Borrowers is coming out whenever you can, you can get it out. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. really good. Well, thanks very much for coming, thank and you. thanks the audience again for watching and calling in.